<laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take my. Are you are you also disturbed so by the Lego that. killing that's fields that's behind us? <laughs> oh, I that's I. <laughs> I didn't think of it as killing fields. I didn't even notice that it was Lego heads actually until you said that. Um, yeah. I mean, I see. I see opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what in wiping out the intelligentsia and in returning us to a more rural. Let me just say that this is not right. meant to be a Lego interesting... killing fields, guys. This is supposed to be that Lego can be recombined into different opportunities <laughs> see that possibility i saw but I'm, I'm interested toby that you went straight to the khmer rouge i think that's uh yep <laughs> it's telling isn't it well what have you been <laughs> watching <is> telling. <laughs> no but look they've got glasses this is clearly the intelligentsia being eliminated <laughs> there's a guy with a beard too yeah see there's it's a, the there, artist there's, there's, there's a mix there's a mix it's not toothy grin beard. there's somebody with a toothy grin they're probably in advertising <laughs> well, anyway, sorry. No, it's meant to be yeah. opportunity. It's meant to be about that we can swap things around, I guess. And exactly, we can combine and recombine right. things into new heads new are interchangeable. It turns out heads or tails. We don't have a sea of butts. We can okay. do that the next time. Right. <laughs> All right. Great. I nice to see you guys. That. Thank you for coming into uh, to this jam today. Thank uh, you. It's uh, good to see you all, and I'm glad that you're healthy and uh, uh, you're still quarantined, I see. All right, so we're going to uh, uh, try, try to, to do a, a few jams, jams if we can. can. Whoop. Um, oh, yep. echo, Whoa. echo. Your sound got really interesting there. Oh, did, oh, did it? Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll, just I'll just wait for, for it to settle, settle just, just in case. case. This, this is always a technical uh, extravaganza. How do, How do I sound? It sounds like you're coming, through, you're, you're coming through two mics. Oh, oh interesting. Okay, okay, so, so I, I think, think that, that has, has to do, do with, with this. this. I get it. I see. Okay, there we go. Ah, there much go. better. All right, so let's try. Let's try um, starting. You know, simply with a with a with an issue jam, which we'll do for twenty minutes. Um, I'll set the timer in a moment and just get my card. So I got some premises here, and I got some topics here. And the first topic I did sort of prepare. The other ones are going to be random, so I don't know what they're going to be. But the first topic that I was thinking of was this one, uh, Super Rich Disaster Club. I wonder what that, what you guys think of when you hear that. Um, people who get, rich, super rich people who get together to um, embrace and experience uh, a series of uh natural did so i don't know they like there's a volcano that's going to explode and they go like sit at the edge of it or there's it feels it doesn't feel like starvation to me or something it feels like natural disaster is where i go like like they're tourists they look for earthquakes yeah disaster tourists disaster tourism right, okay yeah that's kind of an interesting idea like uh there wasn't wasn't there like a film where people who are go back in time to witness uh, events that are, you know, uh, catastrophic or something. So they're sort of um, disaster tourism in time or something. What's the equivalent today? I guess if we went to kind of meat processing plants or nursing homes or something, that would be the disaster tourism uh, of the moment. It's a little dark, actually. Um, Toby, any thoughts? <laughs> Well, I mean, it could be that. It could be people. It could be rich people who get together to create disasters, a la Bond villains. Hmm. Um, it could be people who want to use them for commercial ends, like Elon Musk and his strange digging machine that was going to rescue those kids in the cave. Oh, that always oh, right. And then he called somebody a pedo because <laughs> because that's right. That's right. Because they said because it's not really. They, they not disparaged really digging his machine. machine. <laughs> yeah, they disparaged you know. his machine. It was a sub, as, wasn't it? A submarine? You could have. It was the submarine. It's uh, yeah, as you it was, do. Yes, you just was, you just call right. someone a pedo if they don't like your right. idea. Yeah, it's a good That's way right. to shut them down. So you could have a group of rich people. A comedy. See, I immediately go to the comedy thing. It's a group of rich people yes, who decide please. to emulate the Thunderbird TV show, and they decide that they're going to rescue people from anything globally with their money and power, and they're inept. Okay, so they're like that's, the that's Incredibles. Fun. That's the club. 
Right. They're superheroes. They, they're, they, they feel like they think, their they wealth they're super, yeah. has endowed exactly. them with superhero kind of status. Yeah, yes. I like that because that is essentially what, a, what Elon going Musk to go and did. Save the world from itself. Yes. In, in the Thailand they, scenario, yeah, the, and, he thought he was going to save. He just, said, "I'm going to show up with my submarine, and that's how you guys can save the kids." And they said, "This is not going to work. What are you talking about? Get out of here!" And, yep. and then he called him a pedo. Um, uh, <laughs> and and for them, it's just acknowledging their privilege. Like they're just like they're just doing their best to. Uh, mm. To, you should, to you embrace. Be happy to see me because I'm special, you know, and the ideas that I have are, are genius ideas. Well, so. and we've we've decided to, uh, you know, come down from use our, our privilege for good, Gary, to help you, you Mount, of all the bazillions yeah. of people, you get helped by us. And the organization is Aren't called Mount lucky? Olympus. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. It could be. They, yeah, Olympus could be their headquarters or something. <laughs> um, so it's sort of um, what's that? Uh, <laughs> What's that Magneto one and all that? Um, oh, you mean in the sort of the weird the X-Men? Uh, bubble? That X-Men. It's sort of X-Men. Or... They have a little estate or something like <laughs> X-Men. That little. In Greece. Yeah. And they use Olympus yeah, Airways. Somewhere nice. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere nice. It's cheaper. They there, use whatever right? airlines are willing to pay us. <laughs> Product placement, uh, yeah. Olympus would not be a good product placement. I mean, no, they'd have all their own jets. Out, yeah. That's the whole point. They're, they'd yeah, yeah. use their own jets. I know. And I they'd know. have their own logos that they'd have had to... No, but I'm just saying. Yeah. They'd have their own logos, and there'd be some falling out, and then they'd start competing with each other to try and save people first. Mm. And they'd also... Their answer would be, if there's ever any trouble, it's just take them into space. And that solves all the problems. No, it's just sue them. Oh, just yes. sue them. <laughs> <laughs> sue them and then send them into space. <laughs> I like that they're inept, though. I like that that they're that it there's. I don't. I don't know how they're inept, but but there's a kind of. Well, they like are they up, like? They show up with the wrong socialite idea. inept. Well, no, I think it's like yeah, Elon but they, Musk, it's Thailand, what you said that, Yeah. Mm. They're it's privileged. Like, it's exactly what you said, Marcus. It's they th show up thinking, right, I have the solution. All your solutions are wrong. This is it. We're building this submarine. And then the submarine gets jammed in the only remaining air pocket to rescue the kids and all the kids die. <laughs> well, the other the other thing is that just that they get angry when you don't like their it was, it was supposed to be a it was supposed to be a comedy, and then okay, it somehow it went there. No, but I'm just thinking. That I'm just still like, laughing. I think it's, still think it's funny. I'm laughing inside. They have a if you don't like their idea, they have a tantrum. That's what they do because that's what privilege yes. does, right? Just like you know, I have brought you. It's basically the Thailand example is a perfect example. There's a there's a there's a catastrophe going on. Everyone's putting their heads together to figure out a solution. And up shows this very wealthy guy and says, "Here is my outrageous solution." And everyone thinks it's bonkers. And he has a tantrum because they don't like his solution. So that's part of the ineptitude. It's showing up, you know, at at the event with the wrong solution, or not even a solution, the wrong ideas. And and maybe they're like they're quite invested in both consultants and therapy like so that when like when it goes wrong like they they really need they have to process their feelings about it and like they have to and then there's you know and 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 maybe they provide therapy for other people like they bring therapists with i don't know and then there's like consultants it's like okay that didn't work like uh so they i don't know there's like all that kind of kind of associated baffle gap that comes with uh, financial <laughs> yes. privilege. This is like, yeah. I love that baffle gap. I have not, I can't write that word. Hang on, let me try that again. I like that. Uh, B-A-F-F-L-E-G-A-B, I believe. Yeah, baffle gab. That's great. That's brilliant. It's a great word. I don't think it's I've a... ever said it before in my life, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you just invented it. Now You've it's invented a great word. It's, okay, we're going to put a little TM there so we uh, make sure that we uh, trademark yeah, it. I get credit? No, it's a real word. Oh, is it? Oh, Incomprehensible okay. or pretentious language, especially bureaucratic jargon, says dictionary.com. Okay. That's so, great. Um, Gosh, that's uh, great. I alone. So this is the I alone can save you um, idea, which is what you know Trump said when he got elected. I alone can save you. I have the, I have the, the superpower, um, which is basically my superpower is uh, He's being dollars. Mean. 
is being yeah superpower is being is being rich and i can well it gets into it get, and it gets into kind of interesting you know less comical but interesting questions like about about the ways in which those with financial privilege kind of presume that 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 they that their experience like often mm. gives them a kind of like um, perspective or understanding about things that is just fundamentally smarter and better, and how things around them are constructed to uh, reinforce that idea. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know it's the Trump. I mean, the Trump thing well, being the an obvious one, but it's just. The, uh, the, Sorry, go uh, ahead, Toby. Yeah, yeah, Toby, go ahead. No, no, no. Also, that they're just surrounded by yes men and women. Exactly. So, oh, that's the that's the group. It's the yes men. You know, we had the X Men and we the had yes, the yes men's men. pretty good. The yes <laughs> men's pretty good. <laughs> the yes men, great idea. I love that idea. That's such a good idea. We are the yes men because because it's a can do. Yeah, we this... can do. We 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 can, can do, do it. Yes so men. we are the yes men. I mean, the idea originally actually came from this was, you know, how I like how I like where we took it, you know, but oh, yeah. basically it was that, mm -hmm. you know, all these, all these wealth, super wealthy people are creating all their bunkers and all their sort of exit strategies. And they're going to go into space or underground or in the ocean or something and leave everyone behind. Well, the great so, thing in, the, in that story in particular was the little detail about one of the things they realized early is um if you're if you're building a bunker, you have to build space for your pilot's family. Oh yeah, because okay. otherwise your point. pilot wouldn't fly you there. Mm. So you had to make space for the pilot's family, so he knew. Oh, I get evacuated, and my family does too. Sure, I'll fly you to New Zealand. Right. So you have to make space. You for also the want to then choose choose your pilot fairly carefully given that you're spending the rest yes. of eternity with them in a bunker the rest of your life with them exactly <laughs> wouldn't it be great if you know well wouldn't it be great if you really got along with the pilot's wife and then he got divorced right before and he gets this new really yeah i mean there's also oh, yeah that's right also and now suddenly you're st you've got to you have to bring her into your bunker well i think also i don't mind I, I like that as go ahead sorry go ahead well i was just thinking no, it'd be funny go. if with like you know you 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 have the selected few people that are going to be your close advisors and helpers, like the pilot, and and then when you get all shut inside, you realize that the people they brought is they they feel like you are building the master race, yes, and so you know they have carefully pulled in the right people and they ask you, but I think some of the people we have here are not correct, and you realize you've got a a, a raving Nazi in your group, and <laughs> so you're stuck with them forever. Yeah, totally. I feel like I, humanity. I, I sort of I like the idea of like that it become like it's the the setup is like that exact thing like that they had to bring the servants or whatever the the service class with them, but then it becomes a kind of domestic like drama or comedy, right? Like because it just becomes about like like all uh, in a way once you're in the bunker. <laughs> And you can't get out. It just becomes like a soap opera because, like, or a that's all there is. It's, you know, it's a sitcom. Or a sitcom. Like yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But disaster sitcom. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, it doesn't matter that you're like. And so, I mean, that's essentially Gilligan's Island. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. Yeah, yes. it's Gilligan's Island in a in a in a prepper in a prepper's bunker. You know, so. Uh, yeah, let's see. it's essentially Gilligan's Island. Gilligan's Gilligan's Bunker. Bunker. Yeah. I mean, that's know. classic. I don't know if you've watched it. It does not hold up. Oh, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hold up. It's fucking <laughs> terrible. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna Sanford and Son. On the other hand, okay, that really holds up. I'm gonna throw out another another one here. Oh, that's I don't like that one. Sorry, I'm gonna boot that one. Let's try this. That was based on, well, but because that was based on the uh, the British sitcom. Which one? Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Sorry, I have to look it up. You're it was right, based you're on right. a, uh, a, a a very good British sitcom. Uh, hang About on. two guys running a father and son running a junkyard. Yep. 
The setup is exactly oh, the same, cool. except they were white. The white guys here. They're not black, yeah. But the race stuff in San Francisco um, is fantastic. Like, it's so good. Yes, yes. So it was based on Steptoe and Son. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Hmm. All right, the next topic Which is also turns out quite to deep be... about class and all of that. Sorry. Uh, yes. It looks like... Yeah, right. No, I bet it's about class now. as opposed to race, right? Because mm. that's the British thing. I mean, totally. This, this is it? At what? Okay, so this is the next topic. Range, Overton Winjo, range of political, politically acceptable possibilities. I mean, this is the idea, I guess, that they, 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 there's, a, there's an, a moment in which certain ideas are, are possible, and then the Overton window closes, I guess. Let's see. It is known as the window of discourse. Um, the David, ideas... is, this, is, this rela is this related to what we were just talking about topic-wise, or is this another separate th nope. thing? It's another topic that just came off the top of the pile. <laughs> And we have to see if oh, there's okay. some way that we can relate them or okay. not. Let's see what happens. I mean, I had to refresh my memory as to what it meant. But I've heard people refer to the Overton window as, I guess, certain moments in time in which an idea has come of age and it's a possibility. And then there's a moment, I guess, when it closes and that idea is no longer acceptable. So when we go through extreme So the question periods, is, how would, that, how would that notion fit into this idea? Possibly, or we have to take it in a new direction. We've got to sort of connect the dots somehow. We get these random things and we have to see if they have any connection. Right. Can you go back to the Overton window uh, screen? Mm -hmm. So it seems like it was mainly used to talk about politically acceptable ideas. So it says the Overton window is the range of possibilities politically acceptable to the mainstream population at a given time also known as the window of discourse. Uh, the political viability of an idea depends mainly on whether it falls within the range, within the window, rather than on an individual politician's preferences. So according to the person who coined this phrase, the window frames a range of policies that a politician can recommend without appearing too extreme or to gain or keep public office during a climate of changing public opinion. So Right, so like... 90% taxation in the 1960s was utterly normal. And in the 1980s, it was unthinkable. Mm -hmm. And now it's slowly creeping back towards whatever the outer edge of acceptable is. Mm. Yeah, I'm just, so like, yeah. Actually, I'm just yeah. confirming that, that this is the... I, I, yeah, I think that is the idea. And I was just thinking about how just the first thing that comes to my mind is how death is sort of more acceptable at the moment. It's sort of like, well, you know, people will say this happens, you know, we're pandemic, shmandemic, you know, uh, there's a certain risk in living, you know, and so we have to accept for that. That's an idea that is, seems to be more prevalent now than it would have been uh, just, a, just a few months ago. I should say avoidable death. Any other Overton windows that you see occurring at the moment? Uh, universal basic income. That's that's one that feels like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 50, 20 years ago was a like a ludicrous idea and is now entering the mainstream. Yeah. Of, um, did, did some of our, uh, well, our, I mean, it's just, did some of our disaster clubs become more acceptable? I mean, as a, Let's say gated communities and those have been acceptable for a while. Yeah. It feels like to me, like actually, I mean, I, I wonder. Suppose, um, I mean, there, there is yeah, there is the question of whether because at the moment the sort of the the, the philanthropic, as it were, gazillionaires uh, like your Bill Gates and everyone else, they're kind of it feels like they had their time, and. Now people are beginning to go, well, hang on, this, this is you, the only reason you've got all this money to do all this stuff is because you've been avoiding paying your fair amount of taxes. So it's almost as though the bubble of those philanthropic gazillionaires is, is maybe coming to a close. I'd be very curious to see if that's the case. I was actually thinking about how billionaires 
have replaced government in our lives and that they create these big philanthropic uh, efforts. And then the public says, oh, that's wonderful. And they applauded rather than people saying, gosh, I think government should be doing that, shouldn't they? Instead, it's sort of this acceptance that that billionaires now, they, they craft, they are the ones who kind of put out the policy and create the, the, the wherewithal. I was thinking of an example where I saw a, a, a very wealthy benefactor uh, went to his gradu the graduating class that he was an alumni at and said, I'm, I'm wiping your student debt for the graduating seniors this year. Yeah. And everybody yeah. was ecstatic as they should be. But the thought was, gosh, that's very nice, but shouldn't student debt be something that we deal with you know, as a society and, and have some way of kind of resolving mm -hmm. that rather than a waiting for you know, wealthy people to parachute in and solve a, a problem in a kind of locality? Toby, I don't, yeah, I don't share your confidence that that is passing. I, I feel like the, um, okay. the, I mean, I agree there's like, it's sort of the sort of fawning kind of acceptance of it is being nibbled mm -hmm. at, at the edges a little bit, but I don't think, I think that there seems to be ideologically like still a kind of like acceptance of the idea that these billionaires you know, doing the health foundation or the is is a noble um, pursuit, and in fact, like you look at yeah. on the sort of so-called so left in the if, U.S., if, like then... the. Sorry, carry on. No, go ahead. Uh, no, it was just what if a billionaire then, in light of all the debt that we're about to get into, what if they start buying countries? Hmm. Yeah. So well, yeah, it sort of countries. begs the question, begs the question, like, do they own, like, I mean, what does it mean, you know, for the United States to be as indebted as it is to global markets um, and to kind of itself, like, I mean, it all gets very convoluted and complicated because, like, the U.S. Treasury is buying American, like, is issuing, you know, is buying its own debt, like, so... Like, what does that even mean? But anyway, that's a bit of a sidebar. But um, that actually made me think of what if the U.S. had to sell itself to China or something like you were saying that because all these debt and people could buy it. And there's if it's available on the open markets or in some manner, it's like, oh, OK, we ask, you know, somebody else to to save us. So if we can't rely upon the billionaires, uh, we rely. Well, on I mean, the U.S. Billion. could float itself on the stock. It could become a company. Mm. What if what if a country. Right. If it incorporated. Yeah. So I mean, the thing about bankruptcy, wipe all its debt, and then start anew. Yeah, that's, that's that gets really complicated because I mean, the thing about a country is that it, it that is its power, its taxation power is what gives it the 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 um, uh, power to be so indebted um, because it because markets trust its ability to recoup money from its citizens. Um, yeah. Well, that, so that, well, that if it divorces the citizens. Yeah, it divorces the citizens from the equation, basically, because now it's the shareholders, whoever mm -hmm. they may be, that are in charge. So that's sort of more like where we're going. Anyway, sorry, that doesn't help with the Overton window, but it's. It doesn't it's, matter, actually. Well, I think, to... <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, we, we do have. As you've been talking, I have compiled some some issues for us. So I think that 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 this was a successful outcome because we have what if privilege is used as a superpower, which is sort of what we were talking about—the disaster club that goes around mm -hmm. uh, saving people with kind of inept ideas. Then if we have what if we rely upon billionaires to save us, which is related to that, but it goes a bit further. Then we have what if billionaires buy countries? What if the U.S. has to sell itself to China, just as a, a thought experiment? And what if countries became companies? So those are the the issues that we kind of pulled out of the conversation. So I think I think that's that's sufficient for the jam. Unless you have any other issues that you think. We well, can one add. one thought is that I mean, in the U.S., like the, just on the if a country becoming a company, like these entities or these organizational structures we use to define things, like in the U.S. I mean, you don't need me to tell you, but in the U.S., like corporations uh, were were essentially granted the power of citizens in relationship to uh, free speech. 
uh, and advertising. So, so the, the, they're treated as right. as individuals. So a corporation can it can be seen as an individual, like you know, it's the math equation. Like if if a corporation can be an individual, then what if a country can be a company? You know what I mean? Like that game. Mm-hmm. Like what's that game? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there's lot, there's um, I don't really of, know where that leads. Well, it's also funny that 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 if corporations can become individual, if they're individuals and corporations can go bankrupt, why can't individuals go bankrupt? Because that's not extended to. So there's lots of strange little um, things outside. Can't, the can't individual window. individuals in individuals yeah, in Canada can declare can. bankruptcy? Can they well, not he, declare he, bankruptcy in the U.S.? They, he, they can here, but they can't protect themselves from creditors and things in the same way that companies can. So companies can easily sort mm-hmm. of go into bankruptcy and come out again refreshed with a new balance sheet. Individuals carry that onus with them forever. And so right. getting their credit to be expunged is really, really difficult. So the corporations get benefits that individuals don't get. And, and it seems odd that they get to be treated as individuals when they don't have the same uh, opportunities, then I think um, that the other kind of irony of this is that corporations, if you think about it, they used to exist because the monarchies uh, needed something done. So they gave, they granted a charter to form a company to do whatever it was. So they were the arm of the king or the queen. And now they are something else that is that is the arm of the shareholders. And the shareholders seem to be uh, kind of increasingly managing government. So in a weird way, it's like they've returned to being sort of a monarchy, uh, their own monarchy. Uh, I don't know. The whole thing blows my mind. And so that's something to to discuss. But I want to put it there and say, I think we've got some issues out of that that we can work on in future. And I want to take us to the next chance.